Whether you're working on a big or a small project, there are four ways you can style your Next.js apps. These are via global CSS, CSS modules, CSS in JS, and SAS. I'm going to look into all four of them and we'll configure each one as we learn their pros and cons and also how to configure and optimize them. Let's start with global CSS. From the name, global CSS is CSS that's available to all pages and components in your app. Say we have this Next.js app that has two pages, the home page and the welcome page. We want to style both pages using global CSS. The styles you want to add are in this global.css file here. Since Next 13, there's two different ways to load global CSS due to the app directory, which works differently from the pages directory. So I'm going to cover both methods. Let's start with the page directory. Next.js has an app component where all pages are initialized from. So all pages are loaded by this component. If you want to override it, we create an app.js file and then export a default component. This component has two props, the component and the page props. The component is the page you're going to render and the page props are the props that the page component accepts. So we render the component and pass in the props. This is the default behavior of the app component. With this bit of knowledge, we know that if you import global CSS file here, it will be loaded by all the pages in our app. So the CSS now applies to both pages. If you look at the HTML elements, you can see that Next.js creates a style tag at the head of the page with the global CSS. What if you wanted to load an external dependency like Bootstrap? We can do it in two ways. We can load it from a local path by installing Bootstrap for example and then importing the minified CSS in the app.js file. This will load all of Bootstrap in a style tag inside the page document. We can also load it remotely via a link tag. To add the link tag, we modify the app.js component to add a head component. The component is used by Next.js to add custom elements to the head section of your page. So we drop in a link tag to the bootstrap CDN and it will be automatically added. You can confirm this is loaded by checking the head section of the page. Global CSS is perfect if you want to style all the pages from one place. What if you want to apply styles to one component? Well, we can still do it globally. Say you want to style this div from the home page to change the background color. We can add an extra class name called home for example and then in the global.css file add a new selector for this class name and set the background color. This will be correctly applied to the home page and if we check the CSS we can confirm the style is there. If we visit the welcome page we can also confirm that the style is not applied to the page but if you look into the loaded style tag the style is there. So we are loading unused CSS for this page. This may look insignificant, but if the unused CSS is hundreds of lines instead of three, the page load speed will be negatively affected. We can fix this issue by using CSS modules. CSS modules can scope CSS down to a specific component. For the home page, for example, we can create a home.module.css file next to the page and then add the CSS that adds the background there. In the component, we can then import the CSS like we would a module import. The import looks different here. It's a named import we have called classes. The way CSS modules are implemented is that Next.js treats the CSS file like a JS module and auto-generates the class names from the CSS file on import. These class names are also added to the default export of the CSS module and they are mapped to the class names in the CSS file. So for example, to apply the home class to this component, we use the classes.home. If you look at the home page in the browser, you can see that a new style element was added and the CSS we added applies to a generated class name. If you look at the component, you can see that this generated class name has been applied to a component. If you go to the welcome page, we can confirm that the CSS was not loaded on this page at all, so the unused CSS problem is fixed. Another way you can write CSS styles for your Next.js app is through CSS in JS. What this means is you can directly embed your styles in your components. There are several ways to do this. One is by adding the style property to your JSX elements. For example, we can set the background color to this div directly by adding a background color property to the style object. When this component is rendered in the browser, the style will be inlined as a string to the DOM node. These styles are scoped to the component and will not be rendered on other pages. Another method you can use is styled JSX. With this method, you can add a style tag in your component with the JSX attribute set to true. To add styles, you need to embed them in a string. So we can create an object and add a template string. We can then target the H1 element and set the font size to 100 pixels for example. If you look at the generated DOM nodes, you can see that style JSX works a bit differently from CSS modules. A class has been generated for all the DOM elements in the component instead of just the top level node. This is done to scope the applied styles 
just to the elements in the component and leave all other elements. This makes them even more useful if we include other components inside this component and we don't want to apply styles to them too. Let's say we have a login button component in an external file. This returns a button element with the login text. We also have a similar login button but this time the button element is local. We want to style this button element but we don't want the styles to apply to the other button too. Let's add the styles targeted to this button. We can set the margin, give it a yellow background color and black text color. If you look at the generated elements in the browser, you can see that the styles have only been applied to the local button just like we wanted. If you want the styles to be applied to other components too, we can make the styles global by adding a global property to the style tag. This will remove the generated CSS class names and add the styles as is, making them global. For most cases, this is not really what you want to achieve. You want to apply styles to both components but still make them globally applicable. One way is using class names and a one-off global selector. So how it works is we can add a login class to both buttons and then target them by adding a global CSS selector whose value is buttons with the login class. Although the styles will be globally applied, this will narrow down the applied CSS to only buttons with the login class. Another way that is much better than these two is extracting the reused styles to a common file. So we can create a style.jsx file and inside it use the CSS export of style.jsx to create the scoped styles we are using. We can then import CSS into both components and put them inside the style tags. This should apply the styles to all components that import the common styles without making them global. The good thing about style.jsx is we don't have to worry about duplicate styles being generated if we import the same styles in multiple files. Only one unique style is generated. Also, since the CSS is written inside the template literal string, you can use external props by using string interpolation syntax and it will still work. Style.jsx is built into Next.js, so you don't need to set it up, but there's a lot of other options you can choose from that work in a similar way. For this video, I'll be using styled components, so let's set it up to see the differences. These two buttons are similar in that they both use the button HTML element and use similar styling. We can use that to create a base button component via style.button function. This is also a tagged template literal, so we can pass in the base styles via a template string. This is a React component, so we can import and use it as a component. Since it returns an HTML element, we can add all props that a button element accepts like class name and they will be passed to the component. Since the button is a React component, we can support props. Say you want to apply a different background for primary buttons. We can use string interpolation to add a function to the component. All the props will get passed to this function. So we can get the primary prop, check if it's there, and if it is, override the color and background color. So we can pass in a primary prop to the button if you want the primary color to be applied. The generated styles work similar to the style JSX styles. Unique styles are generated for the elements and a style tag with all the styles is added to the head of the document. Another feature that styled component supports is theming via React context. Let's say we have this object where we define all the button colors used on our app. We have primary, secondary and default colors. We want to access this inside the button styled component. We can wrap our components in a theme provider context and pass in the theme. Since we have done this in the app.jsx page, it will be accessible to all styled components in the app. So for the button components for example, we can get the default background color from the theme through string interpolation. The theme will get passed to the function automatically. Same thing for the background color of the primary button. One thing to be careful with CSS in JS libraries is you need to make sure that server-side rendering works. And the way to check is with the production build of our app. So to build it first, you run npm run build. This runs the next build command. Once done, you start the app with npm start, which runs the next start command. If you look at the styling on first load, everything looks okay and the styles are loaded. Now what if we disable JavaScript on the Chrome DevTools settings panel and refresh the page? All other styles except the styled component styles are applied. What this tells us is that the styled component styles are not being server-side rendered properly. Styled components comes with inbuilt server-side rendering support. We need to configure it though. So what we need to do is create a document.js file next to the app.js file. This is the recommended file to use if you want to load assets like fonts, scripts, and CSS before the app is initialized by app.js. As for what we'll put in the file, there's a document.js file in the next.js style components example repo that you can just copy and paste here. So what this file does is use the server style sheet class from styled components to build all styles in the component tree and return them in a styles array. 
Next.js will pick this up during building. If you rebuild and retire disabling and refreshing JavaScript again, the components will now be properly styled due to proper server-side rendering. Another way you can write styles for your app is by using SAS. Next.js has built-in support for SAS, but to use it, you need to install the SAS module first via npm install SAS. Let's convert this styled components button to SAS. First thing we need to set up is the theme variables. So we can create a variables.scss file for that. We can then add variables for button primary, button secondary, and button default. Let's then create a button.module.scss file for the styles. In the module, we first import the variables via the at import keyword. We then create the base button. Let's call it dot button. We add padding, color, and set the background color to button default. We can then add another button variant that extends the base button and overrides the background color to button primary button. We can also create a third secondary button that also extends the base button and overrides the background color to button secondary. To use the styles, we import the CSS module in our component and then set the button class name to the button variant we want. The styles will be compiled to plain CSS, so in your elements tab, you can see the style tag to see the generated CSS. We've just touched the surface of what SAS can do, so check it out if this intrigues you. So far, we've been using the pages folder to add styles. How does all this look on the next 13 app folder? So if I load up the same home component on the app folder, the CSS modules work out of the box without any changes. The style loading is a bit different too. Instead of using inline style tags, all styles are added to one external style sheet. The global styles we added to app.jss are not loaded anymore. To load them in the app folder, we add them to the root layout.js file. Loading styled components also works differently in the app folder. Per their docs, you need to create a registry file where you configure the server side rendering via server style sheet and then wrap the components in the root layout with that registry. So let's do it. Create an app registry.jsx file and then paste the code we got from the docs. And then in app layout.js file, wrap the children with the styled components registry. Well, this should work, except that it doesn't. After looking into it, I found that adding the theme provider in layout.js file is the culprit. The root layout is a server component, and theme provider can only work in client components. So the solution to this is move it from the layout to a component down the tree, like the app home page.jsx file, and then more importantly, add a use client directive at the top of the file. And that ends the next JS CSS guide. I hope I covered everything I needed to cover. Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, please subscribe for more videos like this.